Nope, we don't need to speed up the process. We don't need to nuke this. You know why? Because this is the non-microwave truth. I am CL Whiteside, and this is brought to you by Time of Grace Ministry. Now, if you are new to the podcast, you better believe we are going to look at culture's truth and culture's perspective. What culture says is cool, is acceptable, and is okay. And we're going to compare that to God's word, God's truth, aka the non-microwave truth. You see how I did that there? And the first thing we like to do is start off with a first world problem. First world problem is usually not something too serious, but it's something to get you thinking. It's something to get you thinking. It's a matter of, of opinion. And our first world problem question today is this. What do you think is the ideal amount of time that a couple should be together before they get engaged? I guess when I say be together, even possibly knowing each other. How long should a couple know each other? How long should they be together before they get engaged? Now, I didn't met some people that's like, bruh, I need to be with her at least seven years because I really need to know how she is before I drop down on one knee. And I'm like, dude, unless you are talking about you, you got together with her at the age of 13 or 14, seven years is a long time. But let's say you are in your 20s. You should be able to get that done in three or four years of knowing somebody and dating somebody. Now, I think it's less about the time. Now, my personal opinion is it's less about the time and it's more about the experiences and more about the willingness to be vulnerable because you can get to know somebody pretty quick. If you see them in all their different spaces, you see them in all their different uh, elements. You really can get to know a person and see like, oh, I am feeling we, we can make this happen. Now, if you go on six, seven years and you don't have that ring yet, it, it might be time to, to move on. That's tough. That sounds cold hearted for me to say, but I'm just being real. I'm just keeping it a buck with you. But what do you think? I would love to hear from you on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. If you're on YouTube, drop it in the comments right now. And let's add to this first world problem. If you get engaged, do you think an engagement should be less than a year? Or do you think an engagement should be like three, four years? Now, I personally don't think about the three, four the three to four year engagements as being good because it's almost like you second guessing like, I don't know if I really want to do this. I might want to pull out and get out of here. I don't know about it. But, but what do you think? And this is our first world problem. It is dinner time. The title of our episode is how to attract Mr. or Miss Right. So many people, so many people are looking to find someone or to have someone. And even those who are in a relationship, they might be wondering like, hold up, did I make the right choice? Is this person really for me? And even if you're married and saying, hallelujah, praise the Lord, I found Mr. or Miss Right. You still want to be in the position to help other brothers and sisters find and know how to attract Mr. or Miss Right. And even those who are single and saying, I never, ever, ever, ever want to get married. This episode is for you as well, because you also want to be encouraging because there will become a time when your brothers and sisters come to you and talk about finding Mr. or Miss Right, because this is so important to so many people. You want to be able to give them godly counsel and godly advice. And sometimes people rule out single people and say, why should I ask you? Why should I talk to you about this? You don't know anything because you're not in a relationship. But if we look at the New Testament, you know who talked about marriage the most? was Paul and Paul was single. So this is an episode for any and every person, especially for those who can help encourage and support those in how and how to find Mr. or Miss Right, how to attract them in a God fearing way. Now, some of you might be saying, like, what makes you think so many people want to find someone? All right. Well, I work at a high school and this is around homecoming. Man, it irritates me so much. It's so annoying to see how many kids did homecoming proposals like kids are going crazy they buying teddy bears that's a hundred dollars buying chocolates and flowers and it's all this because they want someone to go to homecoming with like this is typical people want someone you think about adults think about how many adults especially those who are single are saying like man i just can't find a good brother i just can't find anybody to date the dating world is so hard the struggle is so real do you know anybody do you know anybody? Oh, by the way, if you are single and you love the Lord, drop that in the comments. Maybe maybe something can happen. If you're single and you love the Lord, put it in the comments. And it's also evident that people are looking for someone because of how many dating apps and dating websites there are. I'm just going to name a few. 
Think about this. We got Christian Mingle. We got Hinge. We got Bumble. We got plenty of fish. We got Tinder. We got all these different dating apps dedicated to finding someone or helping someone find find someone. Now, it might be a couple of different reasons on why these people are on there. Some people are on there because they really want to find somebody to date. They want to find someone to, to marry. Some people are like, you know, I just want to have somebody to kick it with. Maybe get a free meal out of it. Ladies, don't stop doing that. I just want to get a free meal. out. Don't be playing with people's emotions just to get you a, a little meal from Applebee's. I know some of y'all like Applebee's is trash. But yes, don't, don't just be doing that to be doing it. And then some people are on there because they want to have sex. Believe it or not, right? Yeah, so, some people are on there just to just to have sex and smash something. Now, when you think about that, even the people that just want to have sex, they want to have the benefit that God designed for marriage, which is sex. So in, in a way, everybody's looking for Mr. or Miss Right, maybe even right now. And it's, it's pretty evident through how our, our culture is moving in our society. But we're kind of designed like this. God. God talks to us in Genesis 2, verse 18, and he tells us about the, the desire to have someone else there. And this is after Adam had named all of the animals, and he's kind of looking around like, man, I'm alone. And this is what God says to him. God said to him, the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. So we do have a desire for, for companionship. And I know there are a lot of people who are looking for Mr. or Miss Right. Now, the first thing I want to do in this episode of how to attract Mr. or Miss Right, I want to look at how not to find or how not to attract the wrong people, how to not attract the wrong people. And instead of finding Mr. or Miss Right, you find a headache when you do these things. The first thing is we try to skip steps. We, we try to skip steps and speed up the process or go too fast or do it the, the world's way. And instead, we just end up finding a headache. And one of the big ways that we try to skip steps or do steps that we shouldn't do is from a sexual way, from from sexual sins. Sexual sins, they make things so murky when you when you're having sex and you're not keeping your cookie in the cookie jar or you're not keeping your dipper in the zipper. Th this happens and it makes things so murky and i've been guilty it's not been guilty of you know playing like little word games or being like you know what i'm not gonna have sex i'm gonna just get freaky deaky and push it all the way to the limit that makes things really complicated and complex and sometimes that puts blinders on us to really have a good judgment to figure out like is this person mr or miss right like if, you, if you're doing and skipping steps it, it makes it complicated and messes it up so so don't do that Another big thing on how we create headaches instead of finding Mr. or Miss Right is when we play house. When we say, man, I got to I got to live. We got to I got to live together with a person. I got to see what they really about. Like, you know, I need to test drive the car. And Pastor Mike just has an awesome series on that. Uh, God's blueprint for a happy home that you definitely want to check out. And he definitely talks to this specific topic of living together. And it might be some facts and some stats that you will be like, whoa. I did not know that and make you really think about it from a godly perspective, what you should do. So, so check that series out. And what we got to realize is that so many times I've seen this happen to men. This happened to myself. I've seen this happen to women. People will say, if you want to be Mr. Or Miss, right, you got to have sex with that person to really see if you can put it on them. If you can. And it's like, no, you, you don't need to do that. But that's one of the patterns of the world. And the Bible passage that we're going to look at comes from Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And it gives us great direction on how we should be moving. It says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve the will of God, his perfect and pleasing will. So when you think about that, how do you know what steps to take? It's by trusting in God and doing it God's way so that your mind can be renewed and you're not doing the things of this world that say do this and do that. And you better make sure you do that. Like, no, we, we want to trust in what God what God has told us. And then it, that way we can see, like, is this really God's will or is this my sinful flesh talking? Um, when we think about this, a, a second thing on how to not create a headache is like don't create limiting demands and expectations. And what I mean by that is sometimes people will say, man, like. I can't get married or I can't find Mr. or Mrs. Wright till I'm like 30. Like what? You Miss Wright just walked past you, but you 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 plan and you should be shooting your shot. But you talking about you got to wait till you're 30. Like, did that come from God or did that come from your sinful flesh? That's where I talk about being able to test and approve what, what God's will is. Sometimes people had the expectations of like, you know, I won't settle down until I get this job 
or I can't find Mr. or Miss Right until this happens in my life. And it's like, where is this coming from? You don't want to put limiting demands that God did not put put on you or man, bruh, she got to be a dime. Like she got to be a dime in order for me to talk to her. And it's like you looking at the wrong thing. Character, character matters so much more than personality and, and looks. And I just want to think about this from a biblical perspective. I could bet you when you look in the Old Testament and it talks about the Israelites oftentimes being strayed away by the people that they chose to date or the people that they chose to be Mr. or Miss Right. I can bet you. I can bet you them Canaanite brothers was probably tall and good looking. And the women were like, oh, I got, I got to have me one of those. Or the women were thicker than a snicker and beautiful. But you know what they weren't? They weren't God fearing people. And since they weren't God fearing people, they led the Israelites astray. And that's something for us to take caution of, too, because when we look at this, we got to be like, man, are you spiritually attracted? Do we ever think about being spiritual friends with people? That's something we really got to take to heart, especially when you're single and you're looking for someone. You're looking for Mr. or Miss Wright. Are you spiritually attracted? We'll ask, are you physically attracted? Are you mentally attracted? Like, how is the conversation? You know, are they intelligent? But how often do we say, like, are you spiritually attracted to them? Can you be a spiritual friend with them? That's something I actually got right looking at looking at my wife. I, I did. That was one of the smart things I did. Now, something just for us to think about in finding Mr. or Miss Wright. Matthew 6, verse 33, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. When you start having your focus and your priorities in the right way, God's going to give you all this. It talks about seeking his kingdom first and his righteousness, being obedient to him. When you're obedient to him, God can put you in a different position or a position that you should be in. When we're not obedient to him and we're not seeking his kingdom, we're in the wrong position. And now that's where we start thinking like, dang, is this Mr. or Miss Right? And we really don't have a clue. And then we start following the pattern of the world. And when I think about this, this is something that I came up with. This is just a matter of opinion. I think you should almost have like a dating limit, a dating limit. So I used to be like, all right, I want to go on at least two dates with this person because sometimes the first date might not be the best. But second date, you really get to know a person a little more, a little more comfortability. But also maybe you shouldn't go on three, four days because it comes a point in time where, you know, like, yeah, I, I probably don't want to be, I probably could never see myself marrying this person or having a serious relationship with them and possibly marrying them. It's like, it's okay to cut it off. It's, it's okay to be done and to move on because sometimes when you start uh, dipping and dabbing in some stuff, you shouldn't stuff happens that shouldn't happen. And then that's when you start conforming to the, the pattern of this world. And I just think about that, like a lot of times that's where sexual things start to happen just because you want to have somebody there and you want them to stick, a stick around. That's not going to help you find Mr. or Miss Right. So don't be afraid to have guidelines and limits in that capacity. And I just want you to think about this. If, if you are single, that doesn't always mean something's wrong with you. In a lot of cases, it doesn't mean anything is wrong with you, but it helps you just think about where is your focus? Where is your focus and are you making the most of your singleness? This comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, starting at verse 7. And this is Paul talking. He just wants to, I just want to remind you in this, especially if you are single, that there that this is actually better in, in some ways, in some ways. It says, I wish that all of you were as I am, but each of you has your own gift from God. One has this gift, another has that. Now to the unmarried and the widows, I say, it is good for them to stay unmarried as I do. Now let's jump to verse 32. I would like you to be free from concern. An unmarried man is concerned about the Lord's affairs, how can he, how he can please the Lord. But a married man is concerned about the affairs of this world, how he can please his wife. And his interests are divided. An unmarried woman or virgin is concerned about the Lord's affairs. Her aim is to be devoted to the Lord in both body and spirit. But a married woman is concerned about the affairs of this world. How can she please her husband. So it talks about how their attention is divided in different ways when you are married compared to not being married. And that's something for you to embrace when you are single, building that relationship with God for sure. And on this episode of how to attract Mr. or Miss Wright, here's one of the most overlooked ways. One of the most overlooked ways is we forget to focus on ourselves and make ourselves right make ourselves Mr. or Mrs. Right. So we're going to talk a lot right now about how do you become Mr. or Miss Right? Because I can guarantee, I can, I can make some guarantees almost. If you become Mr. or Miss Right, that's going to help you attract Mr. or Miss Right. 
Now, this can apply to people that are already married, people that are just in a relationship and boyfriend and girlfriend or people that that are single. Because when I'm talking about becoming right, I'm not talking about like earning your way to heaven. I'm talking about becoming a spouse that is more like Christ, becoming a, a, a person that is more like a Christ like spouse, having the capabilities and doing things like Christ. And the first thing, the first thing I just want you to think about is this. What's your relationship with God? Like, how much time do you make for God? Because if you can make yourself and become Mr. or Miss Right, you will understand that God is second to no one. That's if you married or not. Like, if you have a husband or wife, God is still second to no one. And what we get from this is our relationship matters so much. That's why it's so important to be in the word of, of God. Psalm 119 verse 105 tells us your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. We are all on a path. Sometimes we don't know which way to go. We don't know if should I end this relationship? Should I keep going with this? Should I date this person? Should I date that person? We don't necessarily know what to do because we're not in God's we're not in God's word. But his word is, is a light. His word gives us discernment. His word gives us guidance on what we should and should not be doing. And that's something that we can truly trust in. I think a super underrated thing, too. And this is a point of, of being in God's word, being in a godly environment, being in the church is understanding what good looks like. You ever seen somebody that's like, man, I'm in a really good relationship and they start breaking it down to you like that's not good. That sounds crazy, but it was better than what they had before. So they are deemed at better as good, but better ain't always good. You know where to find good, find good in the good book and in a godly environment. That's going to teach you what good looks like and good actually is. So many times people are like, yeah, I think this is good. And it's like, that's not good. Like that ain't it. That's not it. That's not it. And you know what else is good? God's grace and, and mercy and the gift of salvation, because at times we are going to get mad or frustrated with God. But when we think about that gift of salvation, that gift that we cannot earn, it helps us praise and worship God. And it gives us the right perspective. Uh, something else to go along with that relationship with God is being in prayer, being in prayer and, and taking time out to allow God to speak to you as well and just continue to meditate on his word. Now, I, I talked about having that dating limit. You know, this is actually one of the benefits, I think, of getting married younger. Um, I got married in, in my 30s. And if you are if you have been in a whole bunch of relationships before, that's going to have that. There's a possibility that you can have a whole lot of traumas and you can have a whole lot of things you need to get over with. And sometimes people say, you know, time heals all. But time don't always heal everything. Sometimes time just makes you get stuck in your ways. So that's where Christian counseling comes into play. There are certain traumas and things that you might need to deal with that a Christian counselor needs to do. with. That's the point of being in a church so you can have a family of believers in an environment of God's work that's pushing you in the right direction and allowing and reminding you of Christ's love. That's the point of having different mentors and being in different Bible studies and in different focus groups. I think sometimes that's why it's important to be in a men's Bible study and a, a woman being in a woman's Bible study. So you can talk about some of these issues in a safe space, but get godly counsel that that is one of the true benefits for sure and just finding a mentor who who's actually in the word of god not one of your friends who's gonna give you some bad advice like let me tell you what i did girl like nah uh, -uh. not people that's gonna talk out the flesh all right second thing second thing about becoming mr or miss right is, is ask yourself this question like what's your main purpose what's your main purpose for wanting to attract Mr. or Miss Right. Most people would say, you know, I want to track Mr. or Miss Right so that they can serve me, so that they can bring peace to me, so that they can fulfill all my interests, so they can be eye candy for me to take to the club or to, to some event. Like, that's why most people want to attract Mr. or Miss Right is for the wrong reasons. How many people say to themselves, you know what? I want to have a spouse so that I can be more like Christ and serve like Christ. I want that opportunity to be like Christ in that way. Not a lot of people say that. And that's the mindset that we sometimes got to think about. Like, what do, why do I really want this? I just want somebody to serve me. How many times do we think about actually serving someone else and being humble in that way? And rather you are married or in a relationship or you're single, think about that. How can you serve your spouse or future spouse better? Like that's an opportunity right there because Christ did it and we need to be like Christ. We want to be like Christ. Now, 
Don't forget about this, especially for those who are married. Like study your spouse, like study people, study yourself. Think about the past relationships that you had for this extent and for this purpose to figure out the critiques and criticisms of the other people that you dated. Because some of that stuff is actually true. So you want to fix that. You want to better yourself so you don't take that into your next relationship. If you if you know better, you you do better. And that's something that you can work on before you even get in the next relationship, because everything ain't always the other person. Sometimes it's, it's me and sometimes it's, it, it's you. So that's just thinking about that. And then the intentionality and the focus and the prioritizing the intentionality to, uh, and the focus. Will you have that Deuteronomy 24 verse five? It, it broke it down and brought this to light for me. And this is talking about like how much how much you should be invested and where your priorities should be. It says, if a man has recently married, he must not be sent to war or have any other duty laid on him for one year, for one year, for one year, he is to be free to stay at home and bring happiness to the wife he has married. I was just like, man, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I don't know. I mean, that's, that's tough. Like if I was like, all right, you have a year where you can't coach, you can't teach, you can't do anything. That's tough. But that, that's how important it actually is. And what was the purpose of it? To bring happiness to the wife he had married. How much intentionality can you have? Are you ready to have intentionality in this same way? Think about this right now. If you're married or not married, you're going to be married. Can you have this much intentionality? Do you have this much inten intentionality if you are married? That's that's come, something for us to think about and, and truly look at. All right. The third thing, don't let yourself go. So don't just let yourself go. Like if, if you are married and, or you got a boyfriend or girlfriend and the things you did, like bringing flowers and, and chocolates and complimenting the person, all of a sudden when you feel like you got them, you don't all of a sudden just stop that stuff. The only thing you should stop is if you was getting freaky dicky. That's something you should stop if you got them to see if they really going to stay. But if you did certain things to get them, don't all of a sudden stop doing those things unless it goes against God's word because then you want to see if the person really is there to stay. And when when you think about this, we, we get masters, we get different credentials. We have to study. We have to plan. We have to to work for that. But do we do that in the same way of becoming Mr. or Miss Right ourselves? And we all have a desire for love. We all have a desire to be loved. This is something we have to remember and just meditate on, especially in the times where we might be feeling low, the times where we don't feel love. We have to look at the facts that God has presented to us and done for us. Romans 8, verse 38 and 39. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We got to remember and just meditate and bask in the glory of how much our Lord and Savior truly loves us. How much he truly loves us. Because sometimes we look in at love in the wrong places. Sometimes our our another person is going to let us down. But, but Jesus ain't never let us down. He has never, ever, ever let us down. And it's about perspective. So many times we get stuck on the thing that we don't have. And we forget about all the things that we do have. All the different ways that, that Jesus has blessed us. All the different ways that God has blessed us. All the victories that we do have. We think about the one thing that we don't have. Rather, is not having Mr. or Miss Right at the time or our spouse not doing exactly what we want them to do. Or our spouse not exactly or significant other than not loving us in the way that we want to be loved. We got to think about Jesus's love and all that God has done for us. And just remember all the things that he has done for us and not just all about us. And Philippians four, starting at verse 11, explains to us, like, why can we be content? Why can we push through certain tough times? Because everything ain't always going to be peachy when you're in a relationship. But becoming Mr. or Miss Right is possible because of this. It says, I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content with ever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Our Lord and Savior, our God, he gives us the strength to do this despite the circumstances, despite whatever is going on to be a servant, to be humble, to be willing to to take the next step into unconditionally love and unconditionally respect. 
And I got to bring this up to you. We have to we have to, we, we talk about this, but we have to think about adopting the mindset the right mindset, the Romans 12 verse two mindset. Like we need to get to the point and we can get to the point where we are so resilient and we are so absolutely tough as, as Christian spouses or future Christian spouses, because we understand and we have a, a, a comprehension of what unconditional love is and unconditional respect is. And how do we know and understand or get a grasp on what unconditional love is by looking at Jesus? By looking at Jesus and what he has done for us. If we look at that, that just puts into perspective like, man, that's unconditional love. That's unconditional respect. And looking at Ephesians 5 verse 33, it doesn't say like husbands, you love the wife if she respects you. It says love the wife regardless. It doesn't say wives respect your husband if he loves you the way you want to be loved. It just says respect your Husbands, And the question you have to ask yourself is like, are you ready to unconditionally love and unconditionally respect? And you can be ready. You definitely will be ready when you start to look at God's word. You start to look at all the times and all the ways that Jesus was unconditionally loving us, unconditionally respectful to us. And you can't go into it thinking like divorce is one of the options. You can't go into it thinking a divorce is one of the options. And I'm not talking about like if someone cheats on you or if someone abandons you. I'm talking about how many times people are like, we just had irreconcilable differences. You know, like we just fell out of love or or we grew apart or you know what? Like they just changed so much that I, I don't know. I, I just didn't love them or you know what? We just we just separated. We just wanted to try something new. Like you shouldn't get married then. There is no way in the world you are going to be Mr. or Miss Right if you think that is the mindset that you can take going in, into marriage at all. Like that ain't the mindset that Jesus had for us. Jesus was the perfect Mr. Right. Like how was he such a perfect Mr. Right? Well, one, he had the mindset of I'm going to serve. He humbled himself to serve when we really should have been serving him. The second thing is he had perfect obedience. Obedience allows us to be on the path that God wants us to be and put us in the best position puts us in the best position by by being obedient to him when you think about this we don't deserve jesus's love or respect but he gave it to us he gave it to us he died on the cross he declared us not guilty he found ways to serve us he he continuously serves us he continuously loves us despite us being like never ever ever able to match or to earn his love or his respect and that's the same mindset that we can can adopt for sure and the reason we can adopt this the reason we can adopt this is because god's love is special god's love transforms us to becoming mr or miss right god's love transforms us to becoming mr or miss right and we can grow and we can be great be great because of that love and this is the non-microwave truth Thanks for joining me on this episode of How to Attract Mr. or Miss Right. Peace, punch, Captain Crunch. Say no to drugs and yes to Jesus. I am out.